Uh, Earth Day is uh, coming up here a little later this month. And uh, over the course of the month, we've been taking an effort to highlight some of the ways that the International Space Station Science Program is adding to the body of knowledge about our planet. That includes a number of different cameras that are pointed down at the planet, many of them gathering very specific kinds of data. Uh, one of them is an experimental camera system known as ICER, and it recently finished its first year of operation. Payload developer and principal investigator is Burgess Howell at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, and he joins us this morning from Huntsville, Alabama. Burgess, you've described this as an experimental system. What's the experiment here? Well, Pat, the, um, as an Earth-observing scientist, uh, we see ISS as an interesting uh, uh, interesting platform for various methods of Earth observation uh, covering various portions of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum. We're interested in, for instance, visible and near-infrared, mid- and far-infrared, and even microwave radiation. Um, as opposed to what uh, most people may be familiar with in terms of uh, NASA's efforts with Earth observation, the, the, the most commonly uh, known would be like the A-train satellites, Landsat, EO-1, those guys. Um, ISS has a, a very interesting orbit, and it allows us to see things on the Earth from different locations uh, with different sun angles, different view angles, and uh, allows us to be um, sort of a calibration and validation source for uh, a variety of other instruments that uh, NASA and other agencies have flying. So Pathfinder is a, a low-cost, high-return-on-investment means for us to develop uh, the processes and procedures uh, and to gain experience and expertise in Earth observation from the International Space Station in order to pave the way for future and more capable instrumentation. Tell me where your the, the genesis of this for, for you, this specific kind of camera. Where did that come from? Well, let me give you a little background. We are, we're part of uh, a project called SERVIR, and I'll inflict my bad Spanish on you here for a second. It's the Sistema Regional de Visualización y Monitorio, which translated into English is the Regional System for Visualization and Monitoring. Um, <clears throat> we utilize the existing assets or assets from other sources, other agencies, to provide science-based applications and tools that will assist uh, those who might make environmental decisions, primarily in the developing world. Um, we operate mostly in um, the Global Earth Observation System of Systems Societal Benefits area. There are nine of those, health, energy, water, ecosystems, agriculture, etc. And uh, one of them, in particular, disasters, uh, looked like a place where we could uh, provide some tangible and valuable results while accomplishing the, the test bed goals that I mentioned before of gaining the expertise and experience to uh, to. Uh, to provide the information for, for future instrumentation systems. And, and we are going to show some pictures here in a minute, but before we do, uh, describe the, the camera equipment that's in use for, for ISERV and, and just where on the station it's located. Yeah, sure. Um, well, first, we, we operate in the in the Destiny module. That's the, the, the science module there. Uh, there is a, a high-quality Earth-facing um, window, about 20 inches in diameter, um, through which we are able to, to see the Earth. We're in a, a, a payload... Uh, uh, a payload uh, volume there called the Window Observational Research Facility, WARF. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a, a light-safe box, a dark box, that allows us um, uh, some mounting provisions and some uh, connections to the infrastructure there, power and, uh, and data connections, so that we can uh, hook up the hardware and the computers that are required to run the system and, uh, and look out through that window uh, down at the Earth and, and make our observations. And shooting through um, one the of system the best itself, windows, too. Shooting through one oh, of the best it's windows. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It is. Uh, it is just about the best glass uh, you can get. It's. Uh, it's. It's beautiful. It's. It's extraordinarily high quality, uh, virtually distortion free, and uh, it suits our purposes very well, as well as uh, the suit the purposes of, of other instruments that uh, come b behind us here. The system is is based on uh, commercial off the shelf hardware. It's. Uh, it's the two primary components are a commercial uh, digital single lens reflex camera. And a nine and a quarter inch aperture uh, astronomical grade uh, telescope, uh, again commercially obtained here uh, in town. Uh, we do uh, have some modifications, some physical modifications to the system that improve our position, 
within Wharf, and uh, they also help our pointing geometry make us better located with respect to the window so that we can see a broader uh, field of view there. Plus, we have some, uh, some other uh, custom mounting bits, power and data connections, things like that. Now, are the crew members on orbit taking these pictures, or are you taking them from the ground? No, the uh, the system is is all entirely uh, remotely controlled from our science operations center here at uh, the National Space Science and Technology Center. We're affiliated with Marshall here in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, it's driven by uh, some custom software that was developed here at Marshall, and uh, we have the option to um, operate it in real time uh, by you know sitting there and watching the Earth go by underneath us and and uh, pushing the buttons as necessary, or we can run via a, a timed command system, which is our, our primary method of operation. It allows us to pre-plan our, our, our shots. Uh, we just uh, uh, tell the camera when <clears throat> the uh, target of interest is coming by, mm-hmm. what time it needs to uh, swing over into uh, the, the right position to, uh, to acquire the images. The station goes over and it, it takes the images and, and stores them on board for us. We then do the downlinking here at, uh, at Marshall and do the, the basic command processing, uh, I'm sorry, the, the data processing before we archive and distribute the data sets. The crew um, actually don't have any involvement except for uh, helping us with a few hiccups, and, uh, and we have had a few as we've operated. We had a, a, a fairly significant pointing problem uh, back uh, last summer, and uh, Koichi Wataka was one of the, uh, the fellows who helped us out uh, earlier this year in, in getting our system repaired and, and uh, back up. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that you're getting. You uh, provided us with a, a little sampling, uh, and we'll put the first one up on the screen right now. Describe uh, what we're seeing here. The, uh, this is part of Mongolia, right? Yeah, this is, um, this is the, uh, the southwestern uh, edge of the shore of a lake called Uvsnur. It's in Mongolia. It's very interesting from, from our point of view. Remember, we look at things from an uh, environmental uh, decision-making point of view. This is the center of a, uh, a very uh, delicate and very important uh, uh, bio- area of biodiversity in, in Mongolia. Um, the, the lake itself is interesting because it's endorheic. In other words, there's, there's a flow only into the lake. There's no flow out. The basin around it flows in. Um, this... Uh, causes a couple things. Number one, uh, and, and most importantly, it increases the salinity of the lake. The lake is about half as salty as, as ocean water, but it, it creates a, 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 a very diverse uh, landscape around it. And you see in this, in this image here, a lot of these bright spots, these are actually salt deposits as the, uh, as the lake recedes, as it evaporates. And it is evaporating away. It's one of the reasons why we're, we're interested in it. We're, we're looking at uh, how the, the region is changing by the evaporation of the lake. But those salt deposits left behind there are kind, okay, of, kind of interesting to look at. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, I jumped ahead uh, on your list. I put up this picture of the Grand Canyon because I, I found that to be really amazing. That, can you describe what we're seeing in that picture? Sure. Um, you know, Grand Canyon is one of the, the great geological formations of the world, and it's, it's part of the continent's physical and cultural heritage. And we were very happy to get this, uh, get this image of it uh, back last spring. Um, what you see here is, is uh, a shot that's very near the, uh, the Grand Canyon Village. It's unfortunately it's just out of frame, lower left, but at the very bottom, I think you may be able to see there the parallel paths of the, uh, the Rim Highway and the, uh, and the train that, that, that go into the, um, mm-hmm. into the, uh, the Grand Canyon Village. Uh, of course, through the center there is uh, the Grand Can- is, the, uh, is the Colorado River that, uh, that uh, is responsible for carving the uh, the landscape through the Grand Canyon there, and it's uh, um, it's a fascinating piece of, of geology. I have a little bit of geology background, and I I really enjoy uh, looking at this stuff. Just uh, uh, near the center there, just off center to the bottom, that's the uh, the trailhead for the South Kaibab Trail. One of the trails, one of the one of the very popular trails that goes down into the canyon itself. And I think we have time for one more, and I want to get you to to talk a little bit about the fact that sometimes you get called in to help. Uh, to, to do work after disasters take place. You showed us a, a, a couple of pictures that you shot of uh, where a tornado hit in uh, Moore, Oklahoma. Yeah, um, Moore, Oklahoma, of course, back in uh, in May of last year, there was uh, the devastating tornado that, that ripped through Moore and uh, killed 24 people, and it was a, a horrible, tragic event. We were asked to do some imaging uh, in the aftermath to, to document the, the path of the, the storm through more there. 
Um, as you can see, running diagonally from lower left to upper right, that's the interstate that goes through the middle of town there. Just uh, just to the upper left of that is where uh, uh, Plaza Towers Elementary stood. It was uh, the site where those seven children were killed. But we did this as, as a... Uh, um, a collaborative effort here with another group at at, uh, at Marshall that operates in uh, looking at, at near real time weather forecasting, and they also uh, look at the uh, the effects of severe storms uh, in uh, primarily in the United States, but in, in other parts of the country as well. Those are amazing pictures, I, and I think it's great to see those kind of things. Uh, Burgess Hal, thank you for taking some time to uh, tell us about ISERV and, and what it's doing on board the space station. Thank you, Pat. We appreciate the opportunity to talk to you. Burgess Howell is the uh, payload developer and the principal investigator for the uh, ISERV payload out of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama.